Today, I'm reviewing the BMW X3 40i. Well, I say I'm reviewing, we're reviewing the X3 M40i, courtesy of Rich. Rich obviously owns this car. Many thanks for lending us the car today. Normally, I tell you about the car, but today we're gonna to hear it from an owner's perspective and I'm gonna be asking the question some of you at home might want to know. And therefore, it might be more informative. Welcome to Driven Plus and I'm Max Aftervardi. So, Rich, the X3. Now, you've just recently had this. You've come from a BMW M340D. Now, that's a very versatile car. What were the reasons for the upgrade? Well, I loved the 340D, but it was having a family was the main reason. But the wife always complained about the M340D was the ride. It was just bone crushing because we had the upgraded um, alloys. Yeah. Really low profile tires. Every bump felt like you you'd, feel them, can't you? yeah. you'd smashed something on the car, yeah. every bump. So she always complained about that. And then it was lifting the baby in and out into the baby seat. Um, the pram, when you're lifting it into the 340, you then extending and then you're dropping it into the boot. But so now, the ergonomics wise, you yeah, want to ergonomics a car. For, for the wife, basically. For, I'd have kept the 340D or upgraded to the 340i because the diesel was another point. It, it always, had that in the back of my mind that it was yeah. a little bit soulless. I don't, you know, I don't yeah. want to offend diesel fans because the torque was incredible. But we'll uh, we'll touch on the petrol versus diesel later. Looking under the bonnet, now here sits the the B58 three liter straight six, 382 horsepower, 500 newton meters of torque. Now that's very similar to that M340i Touring I reviewed. If you want to watch my review on that car, click up on the pop up banner. But Rich, not the first time you've had a B58. Now you've right. had the X3 M40i, the first generation. Does it feel like an upgrade? Does the car feel different? It does, yeah. It's it's a more comfortable ride, and it, it's obviously obviously very similar. But it, it it does it has just got the extra bit of quality feel about it when you're driving it, and that's the that's the main difference for me. Yeah. No, nope, fair enough. Let's uh, let's go around to the rear and let's see uh, the boot space. So as we come on to the rear, my first thoughts when these came out, Rich, these lights. I wasn't a big fan. What about I agree. you? Completely agree. They look awful at first. But now, I like them. They work well. <laughs> yeah, they it's do. like BMW, all their designs as of late. These fake vents here. The colour, Brooklyn Grey. I'm a fan. What's your thoughts? Yeah, a big fan. It looks, in every light, it looks a different colour. It looks sometimes blue, sometimes it looks grey, sometimes it looks like a white t-shirt you've watched too many times. It's, I do love the colour. I tend to go for darker cars, but I think it takes away from some of the design features when you've got a darker car in this. The car works well in this colour, I think. Yeah, it works well with all the black accents. Now, as we look into the boot, which opens electronically, it is at a good accessible height, I must admit. Um, and there we are. There's the reasons why you've got a car with a big boot. You've got the dog bed, fit the dog in, and obviously the pram. Yeah. Is it easier getting stuff in at this height as opposed to the M340D, the estate? Yeah, the first couple of days we had it, the wife commented that it's much easier for her to use, even the, you know, the height of the back seat, the height of the boot. Yeah. It's a lot more manageable for her, so, which is the main reason for swapping the car over. So. There we go. 550 litres of boot space, seats down 1,600 litres. You can then bring the boot down electronically. Now, Rich, the exhaust tips, I'm never a fan of this shape. However, though, if you go jump in the, uh, the driver's seat, start it up, and let's give the viewers at home a sound test. Okay, Rich, whenever you're ready. Nice and deep. And if we give the car a rev. That lovely deep tone of the B58. You cannot beat it. So coming on the side of the vehicle, it's got 21 inch alloy wheels as standard. One thing I particularly like, which works well against the Brooklyn Grey, is these black roof bars. It gives it that stealth look. And as we come here, it's got the M mirror caps. Coming down to the front braking system, four pot calipers up front, and you've got single piston calipers on the rear. Now coming to the front of the vehicle, you've also got the traditional angel lights, and there's no active grille on the new X3, but here you've got the lovely M logo there which is new on the M lights and I think I do like that because it when you look in the rear view mirror you actually know that this is from the M division. So moving on to the back seat switch obviously there's the child seat how does it compare 
fit in the child seat compared to the uh, the M340D, for instance? Yeah, it's a lot easier to manage. The obviously M M three forty D was lower, so you can take the car seat out and carry the child, and it's just it's a, an accessible height rather than bending down, lifting up, and then it's a lot better ergonomically. Space wise, you said you were actually surprised with how much space there is between the two cars. Yeah, a bit of a disappointment in the three forty Touring was that the passenger seat had to be really far forward to accommodate that child seat. In this, I've not really it's not been an issue at all. There's more so it space. affected the front passenger, yeah. 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 And this is what I love about the the, the M like cars. These these cars are, you know, they're really comfortable and they're not in your face, are they? They they look good. They look sporty. Yeah. And um, with you obviously being a petrol edge, you've obviously got 382 horsepower under your right foot. Yeah. Which yeah. is very nice, I suppose. Yeah. It's it's one thing that I always want for my daily is I need to still be able to have a little bit of fun, you know, when the time is right. It's it suits that perfectly. So I'll tell you, what, I'll go jump in the front. I'll talk you through the interior, and we'll get onto the road. Cool. So inside the XD M40i, it's a really nice place to be. You sit nice and high, you get all this ambient lighting down here with the carbon fiber interior trim, 12.3 inch infotainment screen with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You get a wireless charging port down here, heated seats, and you get a 12 volt socket down here. You get a USB socket, and you also get a panoramic sunroof with Harman Kardon sound system. Right, it's time to go on the road. Now I've got to say, you do really sit nice and high, you do have a good vision on the road. But Rich, how does this compare with the M340D in terms of MPG and what have you been averaging in this? So, uh, I never really pay much attention to, to the MPG but I, it was around 30, 31 in the M340D because um, you know, I like to get to 20 mile an hour as fast as I can in Wales. Yeah, we are from Wales, but let's not mention that. You'll, uh, we'll go off on a tangent on that one. <laughs> um, MPG in this. Yeah, let's have a look. Um, I can't even remember. The BC you have to get the BMW experts to, uh, to yeah, pull let's, let's have a look. 24.6, that's not bad. Yeah, well, once we've run it in properly, I'll, I'll get that down, don't worry. Yeah, you've, you, this is literally, you've had this form brand new. How long have you had it? Uh, two weeks, but I've had a week away in Spain, so I've not really driven it too much at all. What mileage is it on? Uh, 535. Did you know this is a mild hybrid? I did, yes. Which, uh, it, it doesn't really do anything for me, that sort of thing, but, you know. So if anyone's watching at home, if you really want to know what a mild hybrid is, if you have a look at the XD M40i's at the end, it will then say MHT, which is a mild hybrid technology, which is a 48 volt starter generator. Very small battery, but I think they've just kind of done it to claim it's some sort of hybrid. Yeah, <laughs> fudge the figures. Mm, maybe BMW, <laughs> but I like what you're playing at. <laughs> someone, someone said it does actually offer power in, in gear changes. I'm not sure how true that is. I saw it on a YouTube video that it sort of keeps the power ticking over. Yeah, well, I've done a little bit of research on it. Apparently, it's it's kind of to bridge that gap between when the turbo kicks yeah. in so that it, it reduces turbo lag, which is, I suppose, okay. quite nice. So, I don't know if you've, if you've well, noticed that, that's, it. that's the sort of hybrid I like, when they utilise it to get more power and efficiency yeah. out of the car, not, um, you know, make the world greener. Sorry if I offend anybody there. So I touched on it. Sounds well. It does sound really well, yeah. I missed that. Straight Having six. The diesel, BMW really sound. missed that. The diesel was, sounds just. There was nothing. It just sounded like a tractor. Yeah, I think. They're really quiet. Comparing these days, it, but. yeah, diesels aren't obviously notorious for sounding the best unless you want to buy an A3, an A5. 3 litre TDI on the V6 and <laughs> straight pipe it. However, though, sound of the diesel and the petrol, are you happy to be back in the petrol? Yeah, just just getting in the car and, and just driving it and opening it up. Yeah, it's just letting it rev out. It just gives you all, it just awakens the senses like it's, it just feels good. I think it's a perfect car, really. It's, it's, it's the blend of, of performance, comfort. And the suspension isn't so so hard, although you you can feel the bumps. But it's 21 inch alloy wheels. What can you possibly expect? And it's it's got an M badge. Um, 
but is it it is playful it's it's fast yeah um, it's really good fun to drive and, and it does offer the, the comfort it's the whole balance really for a daily car like my opinion was that the 340 m340 tourings were the best all-round car you can get now until you have a family in my opinion and then this is now the best you can have for when you've got a family what were the reasons why you didn't go for the xdm i just think for the welsh roads which are notoriously badly maintained mm -hmm. um this just fit in perfectly with with what we want but i must say rich i'm really impressed with the feedback this has given me now considering this weighs 1910 kilos unladen with me and you in it it's a two-ton car and it doesn't feel like that at all no it doesn't it doesn't it feels really light it, but at the same point we're now in a world where an x3 weighs two ton i don't know how i feel about that yeah you, you know an x3 you think it's a compact light suv but when it's it's actually the same size as the old X5, so... Do you know what? I was going to just say that when those first generation X5 came out, it'd be interesting to see what the weight of those it, were compared to this. Yeah, I, I believe that there's the same size and footprint as the old X5. <laughs> it, it does worry me where they're going to stop with <laughs> yeah. how big they're going to get, because the roads aren't getting any bigger. No. They're staying the same size. Looking around now, there's nothing that we've seen oh, that's, no. that's as quick as this. And, and, you, and you don't stand out like a sore thumb as well. Exactly, yeah. And, preserved and, I, and I always like to have a daily car with a bit of bit of power because I just feel safer. Yeah. Like if I need to pull away from something on a dual carriageway or a motorway. Get you out of trouble. Yeah, get me out of trouble, yeah. exactly that, yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, that MHT when I was on about before, that's instant little boost it gives me there. Yeah. I don't know if you've realised that, comparing it to your old X3 yeah. M40i or 340D. But no, thanks Rich for today's review, letting us uh, review your X3 M40i and getting an insight to, to what your life is living with an X3 as well. Um, and let us know if you get that new AMG GT and we'll, uh, we'll certainly get a video on that. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to start negotiating with the wife and it looks like we've got about a year until the car comes out so it gives me plenty of time to... Well, you've got plenty of time. Yeah. Good luck with that one. <laughs> Thanks for watching at home. Glad you enjoyed today's ownership review. And uh, we'll see you next week. Make sure to like and subscribe. Many thanks, Rich. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye.